In this video, we're going to look at the rate of chemical reactions, which just refers to the speed with which the reactants get turned into products. And we'll also see how we can measure this rate and how to show it on graphs. First though, it's worth understanding just how much the rate of reaction can vary. For a slow reaction, think of the rusting of iron, which can take years or decades. A more typical rate is something like the reaction between magnesium and an acid, which produces a gentle stream of hydrogen bubbles. Then at the other extreme, we have explosions like fireworks, which take place in just a fraction of a second. In order to actually measure the rate of a reaction though, we need to measure either how fast the reactants are being used up, or alternatively, how fast the products are being formed. Because the faster the rate, the faster the reactants will be used up and turned into products. So in the form of an equation, we have two options. Either we can say that the rate of reaction is equal to the quantity of reactants used over the time it took for that change to occur, or that the rate of reaction is equal to the quantity of products formed over the time taken, with the quantities measured in grams or centimeters cubed and time in seconds. For example, if we knew that our magnesium and acid reaction produced 180 centimeters cubed of hydrogen in two minutes, then because hydrogen is a product, we would use our product formed equation and do 180 centimeters cubed divided by 120 seconds. Because remember, we have to convert our two minutes into seconds, which would give us a rate of 1.5 centimeters cubed per second. Alternatively, if we had used three grams of magnesium and were told that it took four minutes to disappear completely and get used up, then we could use the other equation and do three grams divided by four times 60. So 240 seconds, which gives us 0.0125 grams per second. Now, these rates of reactions that we've calculated so far are actually the average or mean rates of reaction throughout the entire reaction. In reality, the rate would start off really fast when there are loads of reactants that can react together and then slow down as the reaction progresses and the reactants get used up. We can actually see how this works by plotting some graphs with time on the x-axis and either mass of reactant remaining or volume of product produced on the y-axis. So on our left graph here, if we started with three grams of magnesium, then the mass of our reactant would start at three grams and at first fall quite rapidly. But then it would slow as the reaction progresses and it gets used up less quickly. Meanwhile, for our other graph, we know that at the beginning of the reaction, we have no products, so it starts at zero. However, it very quickly increases as lots of hydrogen is produced at the beginning of the reaction. Then as the reaction progresses, the graph becomes less steep and finally starts to plateau as you run out of magnesium. Now, as well as using grams or centimeters cubed per second, we can also use other units like moles or decimeters cubed per second, or even per minute. For example, if we were told that 0.6 moles of magnesium were used in two minutes, then to calculate the rate in moles per minute, we would just do 0.6 divided by two to give us 0.3 moles per minute. So it really isn't any different to before. You just have to be careful about which units they want the answer in. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.